Welcome to the project. This is an AWS project. The name of this project is Refactoring with AWS. So from our previous project, we have seen we deployed vProfile application stack on our local machine and also on AWS cloud. From our previous project, we already know how to host our web application stack on AWS cloud. And we used lift and shift strategy. In this project, we will re-architecture or refactor our services. This strategy is called as re-architecture or refactoring. This approach is used to boost agility or to improve business continuity. So we can add new features, scale effectively and easily and have very good performance for our application workload. So let's take a scenario. Let's say you're working in a project where the services are running on physical machine, virtual machines, or even cloud machines, like could be even EC2 instances and you're dealing with various services for your application workload. You could be having databases, you could be having application servers, web servers, network services like DNS, DHCP, and many more services. To manage all this, you need, you need multiple teams. You need cloud computing team if you're using cloud computing platforms. You will need virtualization team if you're doing virtualization on your data center, data center operations team, monitoring team, system admin team, and few other teams will get involved in managing all this application workload. So there's really too much operational overhead. Your teams are struggling for the uptime and regular scaling requirements upfront capital expenditure and regular operational expenditure if you're using your own local data center. And the processes will be manual and will be very difficult to automate if you have even virtualization. All these processes will be time consuming and very expensive. So we can really use a cloud platform, but instead of using Infrastructure as a service will be using mostly PaaS and SaaS services, platform as a service and software as a service. So if we are talking about AWS, we'll not be going with regular EC2 instances, but we'll be using some cloud managed services from AWS. And cloud means we can code our infrastructure so we can have infrastructure as a code. PaaS and SaaS services are very easy to manage, flexible, elastic in nature. Scaling will be mostly taken care by the cloud vendor. And of course, it's going to be pay as you go model with lots and lots of automation that we can do. So refactoring our application really gives us an easy infrastructure to manage, very good performance very convenient to scale and you will not need huge teams to manage all this. So let's see AWS services that we are going to use in this project. So instead of using regular EC2 instance to install our services, we'll be using Beanstack service. And this service will in turn create an EC2 instance and host our application on it. We don't need to manage this EC2 instance manually. Beanstack service will take care of it. Beanstack service will also have load balancer. It will also have auto scaling. An S3 bucket for storing the artifacts. Or we can use even our own S3 bucket. Now that's all about front end. Let's talk about back end.
in backend for database we'll use rds instances it's really like a platform as a service so you get a database platform to choose from you fill in the requirement and the database is up and running in no time scaling will be very easy regular backups will be taken automatically and so many more amazing things with it we are going to use elastic cache service instead of memcache active mq in place of rabbit mq root 53 for dns and cloudfront for content delivery network so if you have a global audience then using cloudfront for content delivery network will be very easy and convenient let's keep the objective in mind we need a flexible infrastructure very flexible actually pay as we go model infrastructure as a code and we need pass and SaaS services for ease of managing our infrastructure. So to have a low operational overhead. So let's do a quick comparison between the services that we are going to use. Beanstack for Tomcat EC2 instance replacement. Beanstack again will have load balancer and auto scaling. EFS or S3 we can use instead of using NFS. RDS instead of having MySQL on a VM or EC2 instance. Elastic Cache instead of Memcache. And ActiveMQ instead of RabbitMQ on VM or EC2 instance. Route 53 for DNS, CloudFront to serve our global audience content delivery network. Okay, time to see the architecture of our project. We'll be having EC2 instances, ELB auto scaling from Beanstack, S3, RDS, Elastic Cache, ActiveMQ, Root53, and CloudFront. So, user will access our URL, which will be resolved to an endpoint from Amazon Route 53. The endpoint will be of Amazon CloudFront content delivery network which will cache so many things to serve the global, global audience. From there, the request will be redirected to application load balancer, which is part of your Elastic Beanstack. Application load balancer will forward the request to our EC2 instance, which is in an auto scaling group. Here, our Tomcat application service will be running and all this will be part of Elastic Beanstack. There will be also Amazon CloudWatch alarms that will be monitoring auto scaling group and will scale out and scale in based on the requirement. There will be S3 bucket where our artifact will be stored and we can deploy our latest artifact by just clicking a button. So our entire front end will be managed by Beanstack. For backend in Memcache, instead of RabbitMQ, we are using Amazon MQ. Instead of using memcache on EC2 instance, we are using elastic cache service. And instead of using database running on EC2 instance, we are going to use Amazon RDS. So the user will access an endpoint. That endpoint will be of Amazon CloudFront that will send the request to application load balancer in the Beanstack. That will forward the request to instances in the auto scaling group. All this will be monitored by Amazon CloudWatch alarms. The artifacts will be stored in the S3 bucket. For backend, it's going to access Amazon MQ, Elastic Cache, and Amazon RDS service. Again, I recommend you to pause the video and watch this design once again. Let's see the flow of execution now. First, we'll obviously log into our AWS account. We'll create key pair for our Beanstack instance. Our Beanstack will launch an EC2 instance. So we'll create a key pair. So in case if you need to log in, you can use that key pair. We'll create security group for backend service, Elastic Cache, RDS, and ActiveMQ. 
then we will create RDS, Elastic Cache, and Amazon Active MQ. Then we'll create Elastic Beanstack environment. Next, we will update our backend security group to allow traffic from Beanstack security group. So when Beanstack creates, gets created, it will also create security group for its EC2 instance and also load balancer. So we will allow traffic from Beanstack instance security group to access our backend services, which are in backend security group. We're putting all our backend services in one security group and they will need to interact with each other. So we will also update backend security group. So it allows the internal traffic. So by now our backend services will be also up and running. RDS will be up and running and we need to initialize our RDS database. So we'll launch an EC2 instance and from there we'll do a MySQL login to our RDS and initialize our database. If you followed through our previous project, you know our vProfile application returns web page at slash login. So we need to change health check in Beanstack. So when we deploy our artifact, it should do a health check on slash login. And we will also add 443 HTTPS listener to our elastic load balancer. So ELB will be also again get created automatically by Beanstack. It will be part of your Beanstack environment. Then we will build artifact from our source code with the backend information. So by now we should have endpoint of RDS, endpoint of Amazon MQ, and endpoint of Elastic Cache. We'll feed this information in our application properties file and we'll build the artifact. Then we'll deploy the artifact to Beanstack environment. And we'll create a content delivery network by using Amazon CloudFront with SSL certificate, of course, for HTTPS connection. Once we have this ready, we can update our load balancer endpoint in GoDaddy or we can also do this on Amazon Route 53 public DNS zone. Once all this is ready, finally we'll test it from the URL. Okay, now let's make this happen. So if you're done watching the intro, join me on AWS console.